Tips Analysis. I hope you're feeling positive. This is the Introvert of Positron, and welcome to another episode of Tips Analysis. Today, I want to talk about Super Mario Odyssey and how it might change the Mario series. Now, it's kind of interesting and <laughs> fun in a way to think back to when I first played Super Mario 64. Because when I played it, it was the very first 3D Mario game I'd ever played, and it was probably the first Mario game at all I'd ever played. Um, and <laughs> I was very young at the time, and it was inexperienced. It was my first um, exposure to 3D gaming, really. It was my first uh, time playing a game of quite that scale, and I had a lot of fun with it. I still have a lot of fun with it. Um, but at the time, it was something amazing to me, just and to not just me, but to a lot of people, because it introduced so much new to not just the Mario series, but to the genre, to the genre of 3D platforming, which was in its infancy at the time. And today, I think it's still remembered for that, and I think many people still remember it very fondly, partly because of nostalgia, but also because for its time, it is a very well developed and executed game. But Mario from there has definitely taken some interesting turns. But first, before any of that happened, we had Mario Sunshine, which was in a lot of ways in a sort of update on Mario, on Mario 64. It kind of introduced new mechanics, including the, uh, the flood mechanic, which was you being able to use water to attack enemies, um, clean things up, and kind of get around a little more easily. Um, and it also introduces the whole idea of being able to correct your jumps, which is something that did uh, kind of get into Mario Galaxy, but we're not quite there yet. Um, but Mario Sunshine was more of the same in terms of the fact that it was more about exploring and it was more about being a sandbox game. So using Mario's mechanics to uh, search the world for secrets, for shine sprites, and just to kind of have fun in that environment. And to be honest, that's the Mario that I remember the most because of those things. And it's the type of Mario that I have always enjoyed the most myself. And that's the thing about what happened next. So what happened next is that we got Mario Galaxy. Now, at the time, and to be honest, even now, I'm not disappointed by playing or having that game. When I played it, I had a ton of fun with it, but it wasn't what I was looking for personally. Now, that being said, it's still a very fun game. It's a far more polished game than either Mario 64 or Mario Sunshine. Um, it's very fun. It has some great mechanics. Um, it keeps the correction mechanic this time with a spin jump that basically allowed you to correct your jumps as you went. And it just was a very solid game. And it got amazing reviews and everything. I think it won a lot of Game of Year awards too. It was just, it was a well received game and a very polished one and a very fun one. Now, the issue with it and with m my personal issue with it is that it is a linear game a very linear game there's not a whole lot you can do outside of just following the path yes there are a couple branching paths to get secret stars and whatnot but they're usually very obvious and they're not really something you discover by exploring or by doing something interesting <laughs> at least in my opinion it's all very structured so that you know that you're looking for hungry galuma or in some rare cases you're looking for some kind of uh, actually, no, I think it's pretty much just Hungry Lumas. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was basically finding what you needed to do that. Um, and in that sense, it was disappointing to me just because there was that element of not being able to explore areas and worlds to find those uh, stars to progress that I missed. Um, but Mario Sunshine, um, of course, um, still had its issues instead of Mario 64. And Mario Galaxy did correct those issues by making it this way. By streamlining it, they were able to remove issues with cameras, with controls, um, that come about from having a more free rooming game. Now, that's been kind of the direction that Mario's taken since then with Mario Galaxy 2, Mario 3D Land, and Mario 3D World. But then, this year, in the Switch announcement, which I was incredibly excited to see, um, was that Mario Odyssey was announced. And <laughs> that was awesome. Of course, what was cool was that people were already speculating about it because it was in the Switch trailer initially. Um, just a little bit of footage from it. And that was exciting as well. But actually seeing it announced and actually seeing what it was was awesome. Because what I was seeing was a, I was seeing what I wanted personally from Mario Game. And that was another sandbox. Another 
game where it looked like you could explore large areas and do interesting things with Mario's mechanics. Um, and that made me extremely excited for the game. And now I'm only a few days away from Let's Playing it on my channel, and <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Now, that being said, the topic isn't why I'm excited for it, <laughs> it's how I think it will change the series. Now, the issue with this is that I haven't played it yet, so unlike with Breath of the Wild, I can't really analyze the game's mechanics and what has actually been done to it to see how it might change the, it's changed the future of the, of the franchise. But that being said, there are other things we can do because we've heard developers talk about it and we've also seen enough to know what it is. So, what I think it's going to mostly change is the idea of having more sandboxes in Mario. But I don't think it's going to become the standard, at least not the only standard. You see, when developers talk about it when, uh, I believe Miyamoto as well, but um, the way that Nintendo has been very much framing this is as a successor to Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine. And they've now talked about there being three different types of Mario games. The 2D Mario games that we have known since the very start of Mario, uh, such as Mario uh, 1 to <laughs> through to World, and uh, New Super Mario Bros. series, um, and the uh, the sandbox games that are now um, Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Odyssey, and the um, more linear 3D Mario games, which are Galaxy 1 and 2, 3D Land, and 3D World. And what that kind of talk kind of indicates to me is the idea that now we're going to be seeing Mario kind of have those three specific genres that it's going to be defining now. Meaning that there's three, not genres, uh, three types, I guess to say. So we'll be seeing all three types of those games from now on is what I think is going to happen, how I think it's going to change the franchise as a whole, because now we're defining what it means to have a specific kind of Mario game. And knowing what that means, means that we're probably going to be seeing a lot more of things like Odyssey, but we're also probably going to be seeing more stuff like Galaxy and not Sunshine. Sunshine is like Odyssey, <laughs> but more stuff like, um, like Galaxy and 3D World as well. And it's probably going to be very similar to what they have done with the Zelda franchise. Because at this point, um, really there might even be three types of Zelda games too. But so far there are two very distinct types of Zelda games, and those are the top-down Zelda games and the uh, 3D Zelda games that we know, such as Breath of the Wild. Um, and both are fun. I prefer the 3D games myself, but many people prefer the 2D games, which is fine, it's great. They're very fun to me too, and I enjoy them very much. I just don't get as quite as excited for them as I do for the 3D ones, but that's me. Um, but the point is, is that they have two separate teams that work on those, which is why there's never a huge delay between um, a 3D Zelda game and a 2D one. Um, and it's because they have two separate teams that work on those games. Um, and for Mario, I kind of suspect that we might be starting to see the same thing. Although, it wouldn't necessarily be 2D Mario and uh, 3D Mario, but um, 2D Mario, 3D Mario Sandbox, and 3D Mario Linear. Because those are three very different styles and very different types of games in terms of how they play and their objectives. And to see that kind of division, the fact that they're talking about it that way, makes me think that that's something that they might do. At the very least, we're going to see the fans of all three of those types be satisfied in some way by games that come out in the future. And that's something that's very exciting to me because I, I enjoy all type of all three. And I've been sad for a long time that they haven't released a new sandbox and seeing that that uh, that type of Mario game be reintroduced and with such an amazing looking game is something that makes me very happy and very excited for what the future of Mario will hold. And to see how the series is gonna develop at this point is gonna be interesting. And who knows, I might make another video about all this after I play Odyssey, which will be months probably, because Let's Play is going to take a while since I'm completing it 100%. Um, but yeah, um, either way, I think that as of this point, I think that's what I'm thinking, that that's how it's going to change the Mario series, is that it's going to split it into groups, and then we're going to start to see more of those groups 
um, in their defined areas starting to pop up as we go along, which means we might very well see, start seeing even more Mario games released on systems, which, as long as they're not rushed, is not a bad thing. So, I hope that's something to look forward to. I think that's pretty much all I need to say on it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps with the channel, and it's always appreciated. I'm going to leave some links here so you can go check out some other stuff on my channel, or you can always just search the channel. There's lots of stuff for people, playlists, and all that stuff. Um, and so on that note, thank you again. Have a great day, and remember to keep positive.